And as just seen, it is 81 days to the elections, and the political parties say they are well poised for action and are campaigning vigorously and also rigorously for a lot more victory for the uh, individual political parties. In fact, the governing National Democratic Congress will on Saturday, the 17th of September, outdoor its full manifesto. As always, this is your election headquarters. And from now till the winner of the 2016 general elections is announced and sworn into office, join us on television, radio, online, and via mobile as we deliver to you the most current and up to the minute election related stories. Join the conversation on all our social media platforms with the hashtag election hq let's mm. do the news now okay so in our first story the public utilities regulatory commission the prc has downplayed claims of fraud by the implementing agency of the millennium challenge corporations power compact which will see a revamp of ghana's electricity distribution sector to make it a lot more efficient. The workers suggest there are documents in which MIDA impersonated PURC. Director of Public Affairs at the PURC, Nanaya Janto, however, says though there were some issues, they have been resolved. But the PURC says shares, it also shares concerns raised in recent days about a clause in the agreement with the Millennium Challenge Corporation, suggesting it will take precedence over the laws of Ghana. She spoke with Francis Aban. We've seen section 7.1 that says that when the compact comes into force, um, the laws, the compact prevails over the domestic laws of Ghana. But when you look at article 75 of the constitution, it says that the president uh, will sign a treaty, an agreement, and it has to go to parliament to be ratified by a certain percentage. It does not say in the constitution that when it is ratified, it supersedes the laws of Ghana. Number two, there must be some interpretation and we should all know the spirit behind this clause in the compact. Because then it means that if this clause is not interpreted or dealt with, then it means at the end of the day it is above the constitution, which is the, the supreme law of the land. It is above the labor law which is going to govern what they do with their workers when they come in as a new company for electricity distribution. It is above the minimum wage. It is above the uh, labor commission law. It's above all laws. But we from the PULC, we, we, we regulate the transmission, generation, and gas transportation as well as the distribution of electricity. And once it is not explicitly spelt, that we cannot set tariffs there is no way we are going to allow it to go like that because we have said and i heard that the media board said that has been resolved it has been resolved in the sense that PULC is going to set the tariffs we are going to provide benchmarks we are going to provide the necessary regulatory tools for the new company to exist but also we need to look at that clause okay we cannot leave the clause as a stance somebody should tell us that whilst we signed that compact this is the reason why we put it in there we should know whether it is an international treaty international commercial it is analogous to nato it's an analogous to the un treaties and conventions we should know what it is so if there is this clause i don't think see why we are running around it there should be a, a way that we can amend it Meanwhile, the implementing agency for the power compact the millennium development authority has explained there's no ambiguity about the clause in question. Its chief executive, Engineer Ra Safo, also reacted to allegations of fraud made by workers of the electricity company of Ghana. When you have an international treaty, the international treaty is guided by international law. That treaty ought to be ratified by your own parliament. And when, when your own parliament ratifies it, then it becomes law for you. That is basically what it becomes law because once you have signed a treaty and your own parliament ratifies the treaty then that becomes your law basically that's what it means the reason why it, that is required is that take procurement we are guided by the procurement laws of ghana however under the agreement we have other procurement 
guidelines that we need to, 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 to follow. And so when we follow those guidelines, we have not broken Ghanaian law. This is what it means. But how about the tariff concerns? Um, it came up that indeed PURC, for instance, had initial issues that come and the concerns that tariffs may just shoot up. I don't think that there's any justification for anybody to say that tariffs will shoot up because of the concessionaire. We have said that tariffs will continue to be set by PRC and they will continue to set, that, set tariffs and they will have a number of inputs into tariff setting. And we have also said that, strictly speaking, if the concessionaire brings in the innovations that we are required to have and uh, the efficiencies that are required, strictly speaking, strictly as a result of the concession, rather, we should rather have a reduction in tariffs. Mm. And then how about ECG's debt? How far? Um, ECG's debt, as one of the conditions president, government was supposed to have a plan to uh, address ECG's debt. Uh, government gave a plan and government is complying with that plan. And we take you to the campaign trail as President John Dramani Mahama has rejected claims that his governing National Democratic Congress, which he leads, plagiarized ideas of the opposition New Patriotic Party in its recently launched manifesto highlights, which were presented by himself on Tuesday. Addressing the Guard Traditional Council as part of his tour of the Greater Accra region, the president said it was impossible for the NDC to plagiarize the manifesto of the MPP since that manifesto is yet to be made public. Join News' Joseph Akable has more in this report. The NDC flag bearer had opted to pay a catchy call on all guard chiefs to kickstart his tour of the region. The acting chairman of the Guard Traditional Council, who received the president's entourage, called on him to undertake more developmental projects in Greater Accra. We are not anticipating promises, but we must say that we have monitored his good performance over the period he has been in headship of the state, during which time the country has enjoyed absolute peace. However, we wish to have a hand more of the national cake during the period under review. Let me repeat. However, we wish to have had a more of the national cake. The president in his response said he will focus on waste management in the city if given a second term. Objectives for the city of Accra that we have in the second term is to continue to improve on sanitation. We've been working with the various metropolitan assemblies to try and improve sanitation in their different areas. And as I speak, we're working with the AMA to restart the liquid waste treatment facility at the Mudo so that we stop the ungodly practice of continuing to pollute the sea at Lavender Hill with tons and tons of liquid waste every year. And I'm very glad to say that before the end of this year, we will call the Grand Traditional Council we will go to Lavender Hill, we will officially close it down, we will pour libation to the gods and apologize to them for polluting the sea for so many years. The president then reacted to accusations of plagiarizing ideas of his main contender, Nana Akufuadu. President Mahama said it was impossible to copy ideas from a document that does not exist. I don't think he understands plagiarism. Plagiarism is if you steal from a known document and put in another document. But there is no document called an MPP manifesto that we know about. So how can you have plagiarized from a document that does not exist? If that document exists, they should produce it today. But I know that they said they will produce it on October 8th. That gives them enough time to copy as many things in our manifesto as possible. <laughs> From the Garmanche Palace, the president visited Abusokai where he promised an interchange will be constructed to ease traffic congestion on the route leading to the busiest spare parts hub of the capital. 
Can say me ma abosoka assurance. I want to assure the people of Abosokai that they have not been left out of the ongoing road construction in Accra. By November, we will commission the Kwame Nkrumah interchange. This will increase the traffic situation here. So we have secured funds for an interchange for Abosokai. And winding the news here, but we have a lot more interactive news as featured on our main online portal, MajorOnline.com. And then we'll look at others as well. Uh, notably, uh, we'll look at uh, the BBC and the Africa page of that very portal. But please make sure you get interactive as always. 0560-800,000 is a number for our WhatsApp platform. And then please also get onto our page on Facebook, Journeys on TV. Mm, it's now time to get into the newspapers and see what's uh, on the front pages and back pages and center spreads. Please don't go away.